What's going on everyone? Today I'm going to share with you my Magic of Dragon Knight build for PvP in the Stonethorn patch. This setup will work great for both CP and non-CP, but especially exceeds in no CP. That is what I build for, so if you need to make a couple adjustments, go ahead and do so. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. So without that, let's get into the build. So let's start with our character sheet. You're going to notice immediately, let me buff up a little bit, you're going to notice... It's not the most flashy character sheet. We're getting about 1900 spell damage back bar, maybe about 1700 if you don't use Nern Honed. Crit, doesn't matter. Mag, 34k. Notice the mag recovers a little on the low side, but health recovers a little on the high. We'll get into that. But last note, crit resist is pretty high. Spell resist, physical resist, they are both pretty strong. So, we are a Breton. We are running all mag into our attributes with tri food, sugar skulls preferably, especially for that bit of health recover push. We are a vampire. That is important to note. You don't have to be, but I recommend it. Atronok Mundus for a bit more sustain. So let's go ahead and get into gear. Um, I'm gonna skip over weapons and jewelry first because I want to explain that before I get into it. Let's start with the basics of the five piece set we're wearing on our body and the two-piece monster set. Now, we're pairing Grothdar with Elfbane. That is a pretty popular thing. I s s seriously recommend it. Um, you'll notice the tooltip on Grothdar. It is going to tick basically higher than any dot you have, especially in OCP. Because we're an Elfbane, it extends to 10 seconds from 5, so we can have almost 100% uptime with Grothdar thanks to the change of this patch that makes it active within melee range. It's not going to proc when you're in range. Um, aside from that 10% chance, you basically can have full uptime. It's pretty incredible. Um, we run Elfbane five piece, all in heavy. Note the heavy. This is a bit different. A lot of people like light and they'll think it's a bit different, but we are doing heavy. That is kind of where things have shifted with the mag DK. Groft are medium light. So we're getting a 511 with five heavy. All in pen. This is the way I prefer it. I adjust my CP accordingly. Notice I'm tri-stat on most of my pieces. In fact, I even do all of them. This is specifically for no CP. No CP, you have low stam, and you got to get your stam up a little bit, even with tri-food. If you're a CP regular, then I would say you can go mag on the small pieces, just get a little more damage, a little more healing. Otherwise, uh, tri-stat, way to go. Totally cool. Okay, so let's start with weapons and jewelry. So let's go to jewels first now you're going to notice malakath i mean it's kind of a given like malakath is the king right now especially with dots um especially a proc like grothdar so if you don't want to run malakath we'll talk about what you can run instead of it but i highly recommend it now malakath is a one piece so it makes us have to adjust our build a little bit we can't run two five pieces unless they're both one bard so what we're going to do, and this is a little different than some people might do, but we're actually going to run two three-piece sets plus Malakath. So what we're going to do, we're going to notice, notice I'm running Endurance Neck, Ring of Ancient Grace, Malakath Ring. So what that will do is make it so you can have a three-piece set on your back bar, Endurance in this case, and front bar, you get Ancient Grace. So you get your bit of burst, you get your magic almost 34, 3500 burst on the front bar, when you need your tankiness, you can switch to endurance on the back. Um, it's very crucial that you recognize where your health is when you're in a fight, because if you stay off your back bar too long, you are going to start to suffer. Um, health recub is very strong right now. I'd say this is much better than potentates, especially with the 2% nerf to potentates. Um, health recub strong. It is consistent across CP and no CP. And also with the healing nerfs that have come, and especially with all these people with defile now, it's really strong to just have a constant tick. Um, I believe health recover does get affected by defile, but it's just it, having a healthy health recover pool, especially here, 1900, really, really strong. Helps you sustain against multiple people. Okay, notice I'm too infused with reduced cost glyphs. Um, keep in mind that purple versus gold jewelry, it will affect how much it reduces it by, but it's, it's kind of minimal. Um, but definitely, I am a Breton, but still, I am running two reduced cost glyphs. Now, if you were a uh, high elf or a dark elf, I'd say 
for no CP specifically, you might need to pop on a recov glyph here or a reduced cost glyph just to get the max amount of sustain with heavy. But if you're a CP, I think this is totally cool. I don't even have anything to worry about. Um, but as a Breton, this is enough for both CP and no CP, no issues. Now we'll talk about why it is a reduced cost later, but in short, it I feel like it increases sustain a, a lot, especially with the heavy passives, giving you mag back on, on attack. Okay, one spell damage glyph will do. Arcane, so we get a little more burst and healing. Now, front bar, we're going to do, this is pretty common among mag DKs right now, what you're doing, charged with disease. Um, charged is going to uh, put minor defile on your enemies more frequently with the disease enchant and charged. Also, you can proc burning a bit more, and popping burning will actually, thanks to the mag DK passives changes last patch, will actually give you 500 magicka every time you apply burning. So the longer you're putting pressure on your front bar, the better mag return you're actually going to get. So I go with charged and disease. Um, notice I'm running a lightning staff. Now lightning staff is going to buff your AOE abilities. So your whip is going to be a bit weaker. However, stuff like your Talon's initial hit, um, your Grothdar, your Grothdar actually, that's what gets that tick up so high as well. On top of Malakath, it's also got that lightning staff buff. Um, also, Magma Shell, which gets extended by Elfbane. It does even more damage thanks to the Lightning Staff. Now, Flame Staff will buff all your single target stuff. Um, your whip will be stronger, but this is not a whip build. This is a build that is meant to wear down our targets. It is a consistent, sustainable setup, and you will watch targets burn, especially in Cleave. Okay, so this is what we're running on Lightning Staff. Um, Ancient Grace Lightning Staff, so we get that burst. Now, traits here. It's whatever you want. This is what I had when I found him in the bank. So I'd say Defending, Powered, Nern, Hone. Those are all great choices. Um, Impen, I'd probably go to Sturdy if I wanted to burn the Transmutes. But again, this, this is an older older stuff I had. Um, yeah, so traits are your choice. I go Magicka on the Shield for a better Burst heal. And I just like this little bit of Burst when I Light Attack people. Now, you can go, you can go re uh, Magic Return if you want, but I think you don't need to, personally. I think the little bit of burst is nice, and if you time it right, you can you can push your enemies a little bit better. Okay. Um, okay, so that's going to cover gear. Now, like I said, if you don't run on Malakath, I think what I would do is honestly run Overwhelming on the Jewelry and Front Bar Weapon, maybe Potentate's Back Bar. Um... But if you can do Malakath, get Malakath. Like I know it's meta. I know it seems cheesy, but like you'll you'll feel it. It's good. Um, but like I said, overwhelming and elf pain, those work great too. Okay, so let's now we've done our character sheet. We have done our gear. Now let's get into skills. Um, I'm gonna do something a little different. I want to explain ultimates first. So. Leap is going to be a good burst ultimate option. I believe the Lightning Staff also buffs part of it. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I could be wrong. Um, because it, it is like an AoE, it can hit multiple enemies. So, uh, Leap, you're probably going to be front barring most of the time. If, especially if you're CP. If you're CP, you want to front bar Leap for sure. Um, however, if you are a no CP player, which I frequently am, then what I recommend, in fact, now you can keep Leap here, but if you want that perfect amount of damage mitigation, especially with dropping potentates, make Magma Shell your main ultimate. Pop Temporal Guard on the back for that 8% mitigation. It's a little weird. People will think you're silly for it, but the truth is that Elfbane extension, that thing brings it up to 18 seconds. It's 18 seconds of practical god mode. Um, on top of it, dealing a good amount of damage with the Lightning Staff, too. So... I'd say, really think about it, um, you can run this Magma Shell exactly like you would run a Permafrost or a Northern Storm on a Magden, or Stamden, so, it, it, it honestly, it's really strong, um, if, if you disagree, disagree, but Leap, I would say CP, and if you're getting outnumbered, definitely consider going on your back bar and popping Magma Shell. Magma Shell, 1v1, Magma Shell probably won't be your choice. Um, unless your target is is just insane damage. 
Um, but for multiple targets, I recommend Magma Show. It lets you keep that pressure on it. Mag DK is all pressure. So it's very important that you keep yourself in combat. Um, then you can pop a leap maybe midway through the fight. Okay. So bar set up. We're going to do fossilize front bar. I think it's important you keep fossilize on front bar. Some people do it back. I think it's important you do it front because if you're not keeping tallies in your mind of the CC timer, this button, see how it's not available right now? If I walked up to this, if this was a player, it would be visible right now. I CC him, it goes away. That means it, the game itself is telling me when I can fossilize somebody. So if you want to keep 100% fossilize up time, the game itself will highlight, it, it will make this ability grayed out when it's not ready and make it white when it is ready. So I recommend keeping it front bar if you can. Ellie Dreamy want that extra sustain and extra breach. Um, we want to be cutting through our targets, especially in heavy armor. We're missing a lot of the light armor uh, pen passives. So we are going to want any kind of penetration we can get. So definitely Ellie Drain. Sustain is tough on a mag DK, so go for it. Burning Embers. Now this is actually going to be one of our heals. Um, it is our cheapest heal if you use it appropriately. Um, it is a decent dot, not as strong as Engulfing Flames. Um, Engulfing Flames would be what you would want if you just want raw damage. So honestly, when it comes to dueling, popping on Engulfing is, is really easy. But I think Burning Embers is a safe choice. It is a strong choice because when you refresh it or when it runs out, it will pat, uh, burst you a massive heal. Especially with Elfbane, with Elfbane taking it for 19 seconds, like that heal is stupid. I mean, it's it's overheal, if anything. Um, but a lot of times when you're in combat with multiple targets, pop Burning Embers on at least one of them. And then when you kill that target or when it expires, you get a huge heal and you can keep the pressure on. Again, if you don't like that, if you think that's overhealing, go ahead with Engulfing and you get that 10%. Uh, fire buff as well 8% in my case because I'm not buffed with my spell buff Okay So next up it's gonna be whip now. We're gonna go with flame lash uh, molten whip I don't really know how you can sustain in the current meta with uh, Molten whip unless you're constantly healing this allows you to hit off balance targets and just get a huge burst heal as well as doing more damage um, keep in mind that when you fossilize someone whip whip you can do the animation the heal um, one quick way to do an easy heal, pop a Talons, and then hit your whip. Because when you Talons them, it also opens up the opportunity for the whip animation. So, use this thing as if it is a heal as much as it is your spammable. So it might be your spammable, but if you need a quick heal, a quick Talons and whip, or Fossilize and whip, really strong way to keep the pressure on and get healed. This is primarily why we are a pressure uh, character. We, we can heal ourselves just by keeping the pressure on. Okay, Burning Talons. This is one of our strongest abilities and one of the reasons we're running Elfbane to begin with. Um, you will... Is my, one of my Elfbane pieces off? No? Okay, good. Um, you'll notice that generally Burning Talons is going to be pretty short um, for those four seconds here. So, it's really expensive for hitting every four seconds. However, it is the strongest dot that I know of at least, correct me if I'm wrong, um, it is the strongest dot and it can hit multiple targets. You don't even have to look at them. Engulfing flames, you gotta blow it on someone and make sure you hit them. Talons, I can look this way and hit someone. On top of it, I lock down my targets and make it easier for any, any teammates around to get them. Also, I'm forcing them to dodge roll or streak or whatever, so that's stopping pressure on me. Um, and I'm burning their stam on top of it. So, aside from being one of the strongest dots, and it, you don't, they could be in the middle of a dodge roll, and you could hit them, and it puts the dot on them. It is, it is, in, it is honestly a god tier ability with Elfbane. You cannot go any other way. If you're going to run Elfbane, if you're not running Talons with Elfbane, I feel like you might be missing out. Um, you can go without it, but I don't recommend it. Um, nine seconds, so this is what you're going to be refreshing often, but you're going to be refreshing it anyways, because you want to get your heal out of it. So... I recommend popping it somewhat frequently, keeping that up as much as possible. Uh, we already talked about ultimates. I have leap front bar there. A little bit of health recovery on the front bar too, and our passives. Okay, back bar. We're going to go with Coag. It is not the best heal in the game. Um, sometimes it's a bit, bit of a joke. 
Now it did get buffed a bit this patch, but one thing it does provide for us is a recovery buff. So I think it's crucial that you keep this up if you're not running tripods or pots with fortitude. Um, that health recov goes a long way. We've already talked about that. Get up to almost 1900, could probably push it even further. So next up we're gonna have cauterize again, not one of the best heals. Um, however, we don't have too many options when we're running sword and board, so I'd say this is the way to go. If you want to go rest, oh, you could do um, rapid regen in replacement of this, and it's a better heal. But I like the tankiness of the sword and board, and the fact I can block. So, coag and cauterize, these are more just over time heals. Sometimes I'll hit a talons, a whip, and then go hit a coag, full health. And then I can go back to what I'm doing. Um... But Coag is kind of going to be our necessary burst heal here. Um, Cauterize, if you're out of if you're out of line of sight, it's sometimes an easy way just to get a, a couple cheap heals in without having to burn through all your mag. Okay, now mist. This is why we are a vampire. Vampire does hurt our sustain a bit, which sustain is not the easiest as a mag DK all the time. But mist, this patch, or really many patches now, it's couple patches now this change where it's mag per second is incredible this reason alone is why we are running redu cost reduction jewelry now if you don't know uh, elusive mist will reduce your damage taken by 75 percent so any mitigation right now is really good because we we're running more health recovery than we are mitigation um you get your movement speed increased so if you're cc'd this is our, our snare and cc remo snare removal um and on top of being a snare removal if you need it you can use it to get away from multiple targets if you're in the open you can kind of get out of the way use your environment a bit now watch watch my mag pull here see the rate at which it's going down now i'm in heavy armor so if i was getting attacked while i was in mist form for constitution i'm also getting mag back so you can't recover magicka while you're in mist form which is a downside but it's so cheap and you're getting mag back from constitution and five heavy that it kind of your sustain is insane like i'm not even joking when you can sustain in this for four to five minutes straight if you can out heal it um that being said i think mist is the is going to be your clear choice now you could you could run your wings your dragon wings to reduce projectile damage and remove snare i was running this last patch but yeah i just I, I, after switching to Vamp Mist, I think it's the way to go. Um, when you run Cost Reduction Jewelry, which we are running Infused, keep in mind, that is reducing the cost per second by a ton. So it's really, really cool. We can reduce it to about three to 400 mag. You can push it even a little bit further if you wanted to, especially if you're not a Breton. Um, so yeah, I'd say this is the way to go. This is going to be your best chance to take in on multiple targets. And especially if someone drops a meteor on you, Colossus, whatever, use the cheese ultimate. Just wait it out. You got no rush here. Maybe pop out, do a little buff, back in mist. Keep in mind you can block to get out of it. If you if you fall from too great a height and you roll, it will take you out of it. So don't fall from too high of heights. But you'll learn how to use this. It's really effective. Okay, degen, this is just our spell buff. It's a nice little dot, but truthfully, we're mainly using it for the spell damage of time. Um, if you're running spell pots, go ahead and pop engulfing flames on. That would do you there. Volatile armor, some people run hardened for the damage shield. I don't think we need it. I think just that little bit of extra damage ticking. Just adding just another dot onto this, this uh, dot storm that we're providing. Um, tips it over just a little extra. Pretty cheap. Um... I recommend this more specifically for revealing night blades if you don't run DTEC pots. Hit this around them, takes them out of stealth, keeps pressure on them. Talons also does that. If you're near someone and they're invisible, you can take them out. Okay. So what I will say next is again you can put Sigilty here, but Magma Shell is what I have. This is what I recommend for no CP. So this is your CP no CP setup. If you are looking to even 1vx, 1v1, it doesn't matter. Um, you are ticking away your targets, and you're ticking away multiple targets with the cleave from Grothdar, the cleave from Talons, um, the cleave from essentially most of your abilities here. I mean, hell, if you pop Magma Shell, you're dealing damage to your enemies a ton. I mean, you pop Magma Shell and sit in mist, and you're taking next to nothing. 
So, um, yeah, that's this is how I'm running it. I think it's extremely strong. Um, we'll finish up here with CP. Um, let us take a quick look. Let's go into green. I run 56 Warlord, one sprint of uh, Siphoner just to make it purgeable. Move another dot. 56 Arcanist. Um, we don't really need too much on the heavy. Sustain's pretty good overall. If you need a heavy, you can do it with your Lightning Staff and it won't miss. That's the benefit of a Lightning Staff over a Flame. Um, extra health recovery just to stack a bit more. Put 19 into healthy. Uh, 33 into Befal just for that uh, minor defile on our staff. If you don't want to do that, go ahead and pop it into Tumbling or Shadow Ward. I have 48 Tumbling, 57 Shadow Ward. These numbers work for me. Um, blue CP, we're going into 64 Elemental Expert, 64 Spell Pen, uh, 64 Spell Erosion, I mean. Keep in mind, we're in Heavy, so we're not getting those passives from the uh, Light Armor. So it's incredible, incredibly important to have more pen. Um, in fact, because we're not doing crit damage, I have this here for the extra crit healing, but if you want to pop these 11 into Spell Erosion, go for it. 56 Master at Arms, we're not too direct damage based, but this is just to push your whip a little bit further among a couple other abilities um, and some dots. And speaking of dots, 75 Thaumaturge, this will really push your targets down. 61 Ironclad, 37 Resistant, um, this is because I wear all in pen. Uh, 48 Thick Skinned, 49 Hardy, 43 Ellie Defender, 32 Quick Recovery, 56 Warlord, oh, we're already on the back on the first tree. So there we go. Um, yeah, I guess any final notes I would say were mostly clear. Now I will, I will show you that I run the vampire for the mist, but you will remember that because of vamp, you are going to get a bit of a cost increase and in flame damage. Now it's only 5% and 3% to ability cost. Um, really, there's not much to, to say on it. I mean, honestly, this extra movement speed is cool for stealth, but in terms of vampire, if you want vampire versus mortal, I'd say vampire is the way, but if you want to do mortal, run the wings. Um, I'd say that about covers it. Um, if you have any questions, please do go ahead and ask. I am happy to share. MagDK is my main character, and I love this thing and updated every patch, so... I, this is what works for me. Again, no CP, CP, 1VX, whatever it might be. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you soon.